My name is John Marlin and I'm a program manager with the Windows Server High Availability and Storage Team. I actually own the failover clustering component and this video series just details many of the new features with Windows 2019 failover clustering. This video is part two of our 2019 failover cluster roadmap. As a recap, in part one, we took a look, a look back at 2016 failover cluster, million and a half virtual machines, CRN product of the year for storage spaces direct. Uh, we looked ahead at some of the, the things we looked at for 2019, uh, making it easier, simplifying it. We took a look at Azure Stack HCI, a brief look at Azure Stack HCI, which was the uh, 2019 replacement for 2016 uh, Windows Software Defined. Part two, we're going to talk a little bit about Windows Admin Center, cluster performance history, system insights, and talk a little bit about persistent memory. First, Windows Admin Center. Windows Admin Center was created as a new UI, basically a one to all type of UI uh, using HTML5. It's simple, it's lightweight, it's built for the future, it is very extensible, uh, it has secure management. There are updates to it every six months. New features, new additions are added every every six months as a release. It's also, as I mentioned, extensible for vendors. There is an add-on SDK where vendors can come along and have add-ins to Windows Admin Center specific to what their product is. So for example, Lenovo. Here's the add-in for Lenovo X30 integrator. Talks about, you know, how many servers are here. It gives firmware consistency. So it'll it'll check firmware, gives power consumption, gives all sorts of alerts. Everything very specific to the Lenovo uh, hardware so that you don't have to actually jump away to a different UI. Everything is straight from within Windows Admin Center. Another example would be Data On Must. This is specific to Data On. Here you can see it's got pictures of drives, uh, has machines listed below. What's their size? What's it's used for? How much it's its uh, usage is. It has alert services. It has other reports that it can do. Very specific to data on. So a lot of the vendors have this ability to extend and add in whatever it is that they want to to Windows Admin Center to keep it simplistic. Again, one UI for everything. We do want you to try it out in 2019 for both failover cluster manager as well as server manager. When you open those up, we'll actually pop a dialog box and say, hey, try and manage this with Windows Admin Center and then gives you a link to the Windows Admin Center page. You can check to not show it again. That is not a problem. But if you've never tried out Windows Admin Center, try it out. It's very easy to use. You you can actually um, become very proficient in it in just a minute or two just by looking at it. Very simplistic to use. So moving on, we wanted to have some way of knowing the past performance of your hardware. In the past, you could run like a perfmon, have it running 
but it's something that has to be run. You can look at different events. You can look at things, but there's no way of really correlating it all together. And if it's something that you troubleshoot a lot with clusters, this is something that you want to look at. Well, we're going to talk about cluster performance history now. When you enable storage spaces direct, we will create a cluster performance history drive that will basically start collecting various different uh, performance counters. Uh, there's a little over 50 counters that are enabled as a default. Nothing that you have to do automatically does it. We have items for disk, the network adapter, nodes, cluster, virtual machines, virtual machine drives, and the volumes themselves that we will collect. And it is constantly connecting. Um, it's actually enabled through the health service that is enabled when you enable Storage Spaces Direct. It will run continuously and it is optimized for minimal impact. And I'll kind of explain that here in just a moment. So here I have Windows Admin Center. I've connected to my Storage Spaces Direct cluster. And if I look in the, in the dashboard, you know, here I've got all my current alerts that may be there, but here is cluster performance. So here I'm looking at the IOPS of what the drives are, the latency, and the throughput. This is by hour. You can also have it by day or by week. You can, you can get uh, specific data points of what time, what it was, when it happened. So if there's a spike or a dip, you can see it. Um, it collects it by the day. So you can look at, this is everything over the last 24 hours. Again, same data points, week, month, year. We'll keep everything up to a year. And this is the time frame that we do it. The way we're doing it is for the last hour, we'll track everything or create a new data point every 10 seconds and we'll retain it for that one hour. Af anything after the one hour, it actually gets purged out and into five minute increments over the next 25 hours for the day. So we're collecting it, but we're not keeping it all. For the last week, the interval is every 15 minutes. So after 25 hours, we'll purge everything into 15 minute increments for the week. Eight days gets to the month, one hour increments, and then daily for the last year. So we're always optimizing it, and it's not just simply, you know, similar to a, say, a performance monitor that you have running for a year at 10 second intervals. And you have every data point every 10 seconds over a year. We're not doing that. That will get unreal and large and, and will be hard to manipulate. So we are purging it. Another thing we looked at was predicting what is going to happen. This is something that we've never had before. You, know, you can get an idea if you start looking at things and start focusing on very specific stuff, but there's not always time in the day to do that. So now we're gonna, we have the ability to do that now. And we do that with System Insights. Um, system Insights is an add-on that you can download and add into Windows Admin Center. And what System Insights is, it's predictive analytics backed by a machine learning model. So we're looking at how everything is performing, looking how everything's going, and then based off of some of the analytics on how it is being performed, we can predict, okay, 
this is what it looks like it's going to look like in the near future you may need and if it gets to where it's you know going to cause a problem we may be able you know to alert you ahead of time so that you can react before anything happens it will proactively detect and address these behaviors or will give you the option to do things yourself whether it be a drive is filling up and you need to extend it to make it larger, add in new drives, replace a drive, whatever it may be. Um, we will predict future capabilities individually. So we will look at it as an example at a drive level. We look at the very specific drive or virtual drive that may be there. Not a combination of all of it, but individually. Um, we'll forecast the future usage for compute, for networking, and for storage. Those are the three components that we have at this time. Looking to the future, we may add more. And to give you a little demonstration of it, I'm going to let Garrett Watamal explain this to you. System Insights offers new, predictive capabilities directly on Windows Server. This brief video will give you the information you need to understand and use these capabilities. A capability is a machine learning or statistics model that analyzes system data to give you increased insight into your deployments. When managing these capabilities, you'll immediately notice that each capability provides a result for each prediction. All capabilities report a basic status, and the status description provides a capability-specific explanation. In this case, these descriptions explain if and when you'll exceed the available capacity. Because each capability uses the same basic statuses to describe a prediction, you can easily and systematically manage many capabilities, even as new ones are added. You can also visualize the prediction outputs for the default capabilities. Just click on each capability, which shows you rich, interactive graphs. This complements the verbal explanation in the status description, and you can even hover on these to see individual data points. Some of you may have noticed that two of the four default capabilities analyze multiple objects. Both the volume and networking capabilities forecast across multiple network adapters and multiple volumes. For these capabilities, the overall status reflects the most severe individual status across all volumes or all network adapters. System Insights also stores the last 30 prediction results. Use the history section to quickly see past results and long-term prediction trends. You can invoke a capability at any time to update the results. Click the Invoke button at the top of the landing page and each capability should finish in just a few seconds the latest results should be immediately visible. You may have also noticed that each capability has an associated state. Right now, all of the capabilities are enabled. If you disable a capability, that capability can no longer be invoked. Lastly, in addition to invoking a capability on demand, you can also set periodic predictions. Navigate to settings at the top of your screen and you can see the current schedule for a capability here. In this case, this capability is using the default schedule, which is every day at 3 a.m. This ensures that the predictions don't interfere with the critical workloads on your machine. You can easily adjust the schedule to fit your exact needs. For example, you can select specific days of the week or prediction intervals. That's a quick overview of how to understand and manage the capabilities and system insights. Check it out today by installing the latest Windows Server Insider Preview build and let us know what you think. Thank you, Garrett. Now we will talk about persistent memory. Persistent memory is new and it is cutting edge from a memory and storage perspective. But it's basically, it's a platform that can control persistence or, and provisioning. You can use it persistent as in, for memory or for storage. 
It's basically memory slots acting as storage. So it's all persistent, just like a like a, a disk drive is. Reboot the machine, information is still there. You can use it as a write caching or performance tier. It's a storage replacement for some of the workloads that may run in memory. Really super fast. Faster than drives, a little bit slower than actual memory memory, but very fast from as from a storage perspective is very, very fast. You can also use it as volatile, basically as as it was memory. You know, sometimes called two level memory. You know, it has smaller cap capacities that can double the system memory capacity. You know, we've got 512 gig persistent memory s slots and it's high pro high high capacity lower cost memory is in essence what it is so you can have it for larger capacities that can still can scale system memory well beyond what a DRAM can do it does have na it is natively supported within Windows 2019 you can leverage the high throughput low latency projected into a virtual machine you can have it in a virtual machine and used by that virtual machine that can drastically reduce database transit transaction latencies can also reduce recovery times the low latency in memory databases for any failures that may occur remounting is super fast super speedy so to wrap this up we talked a little bit about Windows Admin Center, simplistic, secure management, comes out every six months. We talked about cluster performance history. Get a history of how your machines are, are running up to a year. Nothing you need to do to enable it. It's automatically done in the background. Uh, we've got systems insight to predict using analytics and machine learning to try and predict future on how things are going to be and then we talked a little bit about persistent memory in part three of this series we're going to talk about cluster sets windows server upgrades and msdtc i want to thank you for listening to part two of this video series.